Hello and welcome to this video podcast from the EAU Prostate Cancer Guidelines Group. I'm Phil Cornford and I'm the current chair and with me is Daria Tilka who's taken over as the vice chair. We're going to talk about the issues around nodal involvement and prostate cancer. We're going to talk something about the management and the staging and how that's changed in the latest version of the guidelines. Perhaps you can tell us what has changed about uh, lymphadenectomy uh, in localised prostate cancer. Yeah, thank you for that question. So indeed, the changes on lymphadenectomy have uh, gotten a lot of attention already in the first two days of the EAU. While in the previous years, we had the strong recommendation to perform extended lymph node dissection in uh, patients with a certain risk at intermediate risk prostate cancer and all patients with high risk prostate cancer, we uh, removed that strong recommendation to do lymphadenectomy in high risk and locally advanced prostate cancer. We um, included that if lymphadenectomy is done, it should be done extended. And that's a strong recommendation. So that's basically the change we made in lymphadenectomy recommendation. And the reason is uh, that there has been no evidence that it's therapeutic, the lymphadenectomy. Uh, we have a systematic review by the guideline panel, which uh, also didn't show any therapeutic benefit. It is probably one of a good version of a staging, but um, it has no evidence in, uh, as said in uh, treatment. Um, and uh, the reason is that there has, have not been randomized trials which confirmed any therapeutic benefit of lymphadenectomy. There is a systematic review by the guideline panel which also showed no therapeutic benefit for performing an extended lymphadenectomy. It is of worse for staging, but uh, given that we have uh, more accurate staging now, we have to discuss how this changes the field. And we've changed our view on staging as well. We've also suggested that PSMA PET is a more accurate way of staging people with high-risk prostate cancer. Clearly, there still isn't strong data on exactly what to do with that, and there are, that raises a whole load of new issues for us to think about, but I don't think it is possible anymore for us to say that you shouldn't do PSMA PET, because it does without doubt give us the most accurate information about the extent of disease. The big question, of course, is, so I'm really happy, I've got a negative PSMA PET, now, of course, I think my chance of surgical intervention being successful is greater, because I'm unlikely to have missed metastatic disease. It's not certain, but it's certainly more likely it'll be confined. Of course, the question is, if I see something in a pelvic lymph node, particularly a small lymph node that isn't visible on an MR scan, so this is just a uh, novel imaging detected PSMA PET scan, and that shows us a node, then at that point it isn't quite so clear what to do. And I think that that will now raise a series of questions about what we do next. I think it will at least, however, allow us to categorise these patients and then to work out which patients do best. Does one lymph node matter? Is there a benefit of having a lymphadenectomy at this point? Is it possible to cure some of these people? We know that PSMA PET still misses a number of small lymph node dissections and there's a number of series of cases where people have done PSMA PETs first and then done a lymph node dissection and we're aware that that misses some micrometastatic disease. So there's still a rationale for doing an extended lymph node dissection even if you've only got a uh, PSMA detected positive node. The other thing is also true. What do we do about the people who've got a negative PSMA PET scan? Because some of those will still have 
a small micro metastatic disease. And when you've talked to the patient, it's still possible to go on and to do a lymph node dissection if the other risk factors suggest that this might be appropriate. But it needs to be a shared decision rather than this is our strong guidance to do it. And of course, we have also changed what we do with people who have got a clinically obvious lymph node on conventional imaging. Very important question. I wanted to add on the uh, sensitivity and specificity of PSMA PET. Uh, we added also in the guideline text that uh, while this is true, extended lymph node dissection, we know from mapping studies, also can miss about one third of lymph nodes, which are in other areas than the um, extended lymph node dissection template. So that has to keep be kept in mind too. Coming to CN1 disease, meaning there's uh, lymph nodes on conventional imaging, we have now the recommendation in the guidelines to, perf uh, to perform radiotherapy with uh, the addition of ADT and abiraterone according to st the Stampede data. I think the Stampede data was very convincing, wasn't it? Yes, correct. Yeah. And it has made us think again about whether there is a role for surgery in these patients. And that means that that hasn't been included in the same way as it was before, because now there's clearly a benefit uh, from giving intensified hormone treatment plus radiotherapy. Correct. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this helps explain some of the changes that we have uh, seen in the 2024 version of the Prostate Cancer Guidelines.